The story of the underdog, a pinnacle of storytelling. Watching someone achieve their dream against all odds feels good and makes us think that maybe we can do the same. That's a story worth telling over and over, but watching the same movie again is rarely just as impactful as the first time. So for these old stories, it's important to give them a fresh coat of paint every once in a while. This gives new generations a window into the story and gives old generations the opportunity to rediscover them. Creed did exactly that. It brought back the familiar while adding something new, but at its core, telling another underdog story. For me, it brought back the Rocky energy that for years I could only revive by re-watching the originals. Since then, Creed has spawned its own franchise, with each movie retaining that same spirit while using Adonis' journey to explore new themes as well. Creed 2 dealt with legacy, redemption, and family. And now Creed 3, with Adonis a few years into a successful boxing career, deals with questions like what do you do after you've accomplished your dream, and what happens when you start to doubt if you've really earned what you have. Rocky and Creed both focus on characters with something to prove. Rocky wanted to prove he could go the distance with Apollo Creed, and Donnie wanted to prove he had the talent and will to live up to his father's name. In both cases, although the characters lost their fights, they did achieve their goals. Often, that's where the story would end. They did it. The hero persevered. But in both cases, the story kept going. And where do you go from there? In Creed 3, the movie opens with Donnie's last fight before retirement. After that, he focuses on being a manager in training up-and-coming fighters like the current protege Felix Chavez. Bianca had to change her career path even sooner because of her hearing issues. She's taken a step back from performing to focus more on producing. She got to live her dream for a bit, but eventually had to be flexible and find a new way to experience her passions with the changes they both made in their career. In Creed 2, Donnie and Bianca's daughter was born deaf. By Creed 3, you can see how they've learned to adjust. Donnie and his mother learn sign language, and as a family, they're able to communicate seamlessly. But by this point, a new villain arrives in Damien Anderson. And of course, I have to put the word villain in quotes because we can understand his frustrations and motivations when they were younger. He came to Donnie's aid by drawing a gun that got him arrested, and for the next 18 years, while he was locked away in a prison, Donnie flourished by living out Damien's dream to be a champion boxer. And now, with only a few years left in his physical prime, Damien has little time to waste. He can't build a boxing career from scratch and reach the same heights as Creed. He needs a one in a million shot, just like Apollo gave Rocky nearly four decades earlier. So when he asks Donnie for that shot at the title, you can understand it. Come on, man, hey, hey, use your head. Okay, use your head. Leave all that other mess outside. I told you I won't be. And I told you it was going to take some time. All right. All right? Go take a walk. Get some air. Right? But desperate and feeling justified by a sense of betrayal, he takes things too far. Creed is planning a title match between Felix and Drago, so Damien has one of his friends injure Drago, forcing him to drop out of the fight, leaving Creed with no choice but to let Damien take his spot during the fight. Damien takes cheap shots without the ref's notice and ultimately wins. He becomes the new heavyweight champion of the world. As Creed spends more time with his old family, the past consumes him. Like any great villain, Anderson comes to represent something more than himself, imposter syndrome, and the danger of an unconfronted past. Damien accuses Creed of stealing his life, and the accusation hits home when Creed starts to unravel and wonder if he really does deserve the life he's built for himself. Was it unfair that he ran that night while Damien was picked up by the cops? Was it unfair that he never visited him or contacted him after that? And is it unfair that he's living the life Damien always wanted? But worst of all, Creed is forced to remember trauma he tried to forget. The incident which got Damien arrested began when Donnie spotted one of the caregivers from his and Damien's group home, Leon. Leon was physically abusive to both Donnie and Damien, so when Donnie spotted him outside a liquor store, he snapped and attacked the old man. But Leon's friends came to his defense and fought back. They started beating up Donnie. 
outnumbered, Damien saw no other choice but to draw his gun to make them stop. When Bianca confronts Danny about his past and asks Leon, Donnie snaps and ends up yelling at her, saying he's forgotten all about this and doesn't want to talk about it. I need to understand what is what going on. What you want to hear? Some sad story? You trying to feel sorry for me or no, something? No, I don't want to feel sorry for you. I want to understand you. I want to know what is going on There's with you in my house. There's nothing to talk about. Can I don't want to talk about anything. There's a problem here for the character. For him to put up with a traumatic past or keep it buried only to reveal itself in emotional outbursts, Donnie knows that will prevent him from being the best father possible to Amara, so he needs to sort himself out by talking about it and processing it. But that's easier said than done. Donnie doesn't find it in himself to tell Bianca the truth about Leon until he loses his mother. Donnie is robbed of one more loving conversation between him and his mother, so finally, in his grief, he opens up. He's able to repeat the earlier conversation with Bianca. But instead of a shouting match, it ends with a quiet confession. He tells her about Leon and about how he abandoned Damien when he was sent to prison, all in the hopes of forgetting the past, something he, in part, learned from his own mother. Apparently, Damien had been writing to Donnie all these years, but she never shared the letters with him out of fear that he'd be drawn back into a friendship with someone she saw as a bad influence. It was a messy decision, because maybe she was right, but at the same time, she was complicit in burying the past instead of dealing with it. As a result, Damien had power over Donnie because those memories still had power over him. After Damien dredged them back up, Donnie didn't know how to deal with the sudden flood of guilt and drama, so he ended up lashing out at someone he loves. Instead of burying the past, Donnie had dealt with it by thinking about it and talking about it. Eventually, the emotional change that comes with them would have faded, in which case it would have been much easier to deal with his old friend on a rational, an emotional level. And what about the actual rift between Donnie and Damien? By the end of the movie, they finally reconcile, and it doesn't take many words. Just an acknowledgement that they were both children when the incident with Leon occurred. It's not entirely fair to blame Donnie for the choice he made as a child, and whether or not he should have kept in touch with Damien. Ultimately, they each have to take responsibility for the lives they've lived. That's what Damien does as he finally forgives his old friend, but before this moment, that conversation seemed impossible. Damien was only interested in revenge and lording his newfound status as the heavyweight champion over Adonis. What happened? To change all that is no mystery. They spent 30 to 40 minutes punching each other to a pulp. A few things happen here when you don't know someone or, in Damien's case, you don't know them anymore. It's easy to make assumptions about who they are and it takes a lot to change your mind about those assumptions. Usually words alone aren't enough. You have to see or experience actual action in Damien's mind. Donnie was a kid who abandoned him and stole his life, using what Damien taught him to begin with in order to succeed. Any amount of defending himself to Damien would have only fallen on deaf ears because words can be used to lie, twist, or exaggerate. But physical ability is brutally honest. Nothing can replace or simulate years of practice and training. You can't fake good boxing. In their 12th round, Damien feels the extent of everything Donnie has accomplished, and it's impossible to lie to himself anymore. Creed earned what he was, he fought for it, and won. And that's proven not only to Damien, but to Donnie himself. And on a visceral level, this was an opportunity for Damien and Donnie to channel their aggression. It's easy to forget how intertwined our minds and bodies are. It may seem intuitive that emotional issues are to be solved with words and introspection alone, but sometimes that's not enough, and sometimes our minds seem to act beyond our control. What if something is bothering you, but no matter how much you reason with yourself, and no matter how much you talk it out, the negative thoughts and their associated feelings won't let you go? Sometimes the only lever you can pull is your physical body. You go for a walk, you go for a run, or you fight in a controlled environment like a jiu-jitsu or boxing gym. Sometimes that physical activity will provide an emotional release and teach your brain that you are in control. It might seem like an oversimplification in the movie that fighting each other solves their problems, but undoubtedly, it is one tool to be used along with all the others like introspection, remembering who you're fighting for, and opening up to the people close to you. I found it very true to life that movies, like any art form, can be used in so many different ways.
Sometimes they're great to just entertain and pass the time, but sometimes they're a thrill ride. Sometimes they're a window into dark corners of the human experience. For me, the Rocky series has been almost medicinal. One of the best examples of the underdog story that's been updated enough times to always be a source of energy and motivation in my life. It teaches you to remember that life isn't about how hard you hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much can you take and keep moving forward? That's how winning is done. Now, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth, but you've got to be willing to take the hits. Just like Damien, sometimes words aren't enough to get you where you need to be. Sometimes you need to get punched in the face by your best friend, or if you need a less painful approach, a really good movie might also do the trick. So, what do you guys think about the plot of Creed 3? Do you think that it was a good idea bringing Damien into the mix to further character development, or should the series have ended with the previous installment? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, subscribe for more content like this, and as always, thanks for watching.